Welcome back, Impact Church, to another session of our Healthy Discipleship devotional series. Today, we're going to be talking about our mental health. And there are so many different avenues that we could talk about when it comes to mental health. But I actually want to discuss an area that really is overlooked in our culture that isn't discussed really at all. And that is the effect that information overload has on the human body and specifically mentally speaking. Now, whether we are aware of it or not, we are constantly constantly bombarded with information. We are in intaking so much information at a rapid rate that our brains cannot healthily process it every single day, whether we are intentionally absorbing information, maybe through study, or whether we are unintentionally uh, absorbing information. And this can be through scrolling through social media or through news feeds or news cycles that we are absorbing information every day. And during these unintentional moments, our brains are actually working harder and faster and draining more energy out of our bodies at a rate that we are actually completely unaware of for the most part. And it is, uh, it's often things that really don't even add value to our everyday and can actually be harmful to us in the sense of what we're absorbing. So the action step question that I want to ask us today is what are we filling our mental tank with as we break down this session this week? And I really want to speak to more of a scientific side as opposed to more of a spiritual side and we'll tie them together at the end. But I love what cognitive scientist Herbert Simon said. He said this, he said, what information consumes is our attention and a wealth of information means a poverty of attention. You see, the quantity of information that you and I are exposed to every single day is astounding. In fact, in the 2020s, we are now absorbing five times more information than we did in the 1990s. And yet our brains have not developed any more than in the 1990s. And in fact, since the invention of the smartphone, our ability to uh, absorb information or our, sorry, our attention span has actually decreased by a whopping 50% to the fact that our um, attention span is now down to eight seconds, which is one second less than a goldfish, if I can tell you that. But how did we get here? Well, to be honest, it actually isn't even any fault of our own because the uh, our brains have been trained to be addicted to these devices and to, to our phones, to our tablets, to all the screens. And every time that we turn to our phones, we turn to our screens, there's actually a release of this hormone in our bodies chemically called dopamine. And it is a feel-good hormone that we become I'm actually addicted to. Uh, counseling psychologist Dennis Butimer said this. He said, dopamine motivates us to take action. And each time we hear a notification, we check our device. The problem is this dopamine boost is temporary and leads to a letdown. And our brains, they want more dopamine, which triggers the habit of checking our phones constantly throughout the day. And statistics have shown that we check our phones a whopping 81,000 times per year or an average of every 1.3 minutes we are checking our phones and our brains have been trained to become addicted to this feel-good hormone called dopamine and become dependent upon it or we become dependent upon our devices in our lives. In fact, Tristan Harris, who is a, a former Google design ethicist, said this, of the effects of our phones and our lives. He says, we have been trained and conditioned ourselves that when we feel uncomfortable, lonely, uncertain, or afraid, that we have a digital pacifier as our method of consolation. And he's really not wrong when he says that. Because when we look at the effects of dopamine on the human body, it actually has the same chemical pull as does addiction to drugs. When you look at someone who does drugs, uh, certain drugs in particular, there is actually a mass release of dopamine in the system, which is why it, it, people get addicted to it, people get stuck to it. But the problem is that uh, there is this threshold that is created that the more people use these drugs and there's this mass release of this hormone called dopamine, it increases the threshold so that people have to do that more often, more frequently and at higher doses and able to actually attain that, that high that they experience or that to attain that release of that feel-good hormone of dopamine in their system. And it becomes this perpetual cycle in which really leads to these 
mental lows or these emotional lows when they can't sustain that level of dopamine in the body. And the same is actually true in the physical body when it comes to our uh, addiction to the cell phones, not to the degree of, uh, of drugs, I'm not gonna say that, but there is that dopamine connection in our bodies that, that craves that release and we cannot sustain it at all times. Now, if you are to look at the opposite end of the spectrum, there's also a hormone that has been uh, tied scientifically to information overload, and that is one that is called cortisol. And cortisol has been connected, uh, and, and the effects uh, that it has on our body are profound. It's linked to increased weight gain, increased fatigue, increased irritability, and high blood pressure. And when we are uh, consuming mass amounts of information, scientists have shown that there is also this release of cortisol in our bodies physically. So to tie this back to our original question, I want to ask you, what are you filling your mental tank with? Now, uh, it's okay to be on our phones. I'm literally using a, a screen to go over my notes here right now. So I'm not saying don't be on your phones. We need them to, to a certain degree. But when it comes to information overload, they can be detrimental to our mental health as healthy disciples in Christ Jesus. But I want to challenge you with this question. What are we filling our mental tank with because the quality of information and quantity of information is very important that what we are tying in. And I like to use the analogy of if you were to have, let's say you have a $100,000 sports car, praise Jesus, what are you going to put in that gas tank? You're not going to put the cheap, dirty gas into that gas tank. You're going to put high premium octane fuel into that thing. And the same should be true about us, about our uh, our bodies, our mental uh, capacity, what are we filling our mental tank with? Because if you were to, you know, fill it constantly with social media or or with news, uh, you know, it'd be like putting milk in your gas tank, all right? It's just not going to function long term. Or if you're constantly filling your mental tank with uh, news of, of what's going on around the world and all the negativity attached to that, well, you might as well just put coffee in your gas tank and it's not going to go very far. But if you're filling your mental tank with the word of God, with sermons, with worship, with prayer time, well, that's like putting high octane fuel into our system that is going to lead us to be healthy disciples mentally. And as we grow in our mental health church, we will learn to live like Jesus and love like Jesus, to be healthy disciples here on the earth so that we can transform our world. We'll see you next week.